There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. If you think about the Haber process, it's a pretty massive kind of process. You obviously have, you know, the actual reaction facility, which is, you know, you've got the reactor where you have the actual catalyst that makes it all happen. You've got the condensing area, you have the tubes that play a role. You have the facility itself being a massive facility, which is you know, quite big. And we're looking at lots of different things. We're looking at pressure. We're looking at, uh, sorry, temperature. We're looking at pressure. We're looking at the catalyst used. We have, we know it's in equilibrium. We know the reaction is exothermic. So there's lots of things we have to consider when it comes to why we choose the things we choose. So why we choose 500 degrees Celsius. Why we choose 20 milliampere in terms of pressure. Why we use an iron catalyst. And... Some of the things, some of the reasons why we consider all this is obviously we want to minimize the cost, we want to make it as cheap as possible, we want to ma maximize the ammonia production, we want to have as much ammonia as possible, and we want to be able to make it as safe as possible as well. And that's really important as well. Safety is, is quite important. The reason I'm mentioning all this is because Dopamine itself says explain why the Haber process is based on a delicate balancing act involving reaction energy, reaction rate, and equilibrium. Uh, these are the three things. And reaction energy, because I haven't mentioned that term much. Reaction energy is, is a bit like activation energy. So it's basically the energy required to make the reaction go ahead. So required energy to you know, break the bonds and form new bonds. So that's you know, for these bonds to be broken in nitrogen and hydrogen, and for new bonds to reappear to form ammonia. That's the reaction energy. So required energy to make the reaction go ahead. So these are the three, three things we have to talk about and how we achieve this balance to maximize efficiency. Now, there is, so if you look at this graph here, it shows an interesting thing. So if, if you look at this graph, you can see that on the one hand here, we've got, oops, oops, we've got percentage ammonia yield. So this is the higher, so here is 100% ammonia yield. So, oops, oops, <laughs> damn it. Um, here we get 100%, which means that all of this will be converted into ammonia. It's basically a complete forward reaction in one way direction. Everything that we have, all the reactants will be made into ammonia at this 100% point. Whereas at this 0% point, it's going to be all being and the reactants themselves. So more, more or less, most of it will be reactants. None of it will be ammonia. So this is where we want to have. We want to be at 100%. We don't really want to be at 0%. So if you look at what conditions do we need to make to achieve 100% yield of ammonia? Well, it says pressure. We're looking at about 1,000 atmospheric pressure. So 1,000 atmospheric pressure will achieve that sort of yield, right? So really high pressure will achieve that yield. And we'll talk about the why that is in a couple of videos' time. And also a low temperature, Right. We talked about it in the last couple of videos, a low temperature will actually favor percentage ammonia yield. So a low temperature will be also useful. Now this is what would be the ideal. This would give you more or less 100%. 100% right? ammonia yield. On the flip side, if we have 700 degrees Celsius, so higher temperatures, and zero atmospheric pressure, so it's low pressure, that would give us the lowest yield, which makes sense, right? So here, this is 700 degrees here, and the yield is 10% or less. It's very low. Now, the question is, if we know this gives us the highest yield, the question is, why isn't option one chosen? Why don't we do that? Because if you think about the actual um, conditions we have, we're doing about roughly 500 degrees Celsius, and it's between that 400 to 500 50 degrees Celsius. Some plants will use different types of temperatures, but overall it's that medium sort of temperature area. So the temperature we choose is medium, right? It's not low, it's not high. So that's about 500-ish degrees Celsius. The atmospheric pressure, so we choose about 200 atmospheric pressure, which again is medium. It's not too low, it's too high. It's sort of in that medium category. It's between zero and sort of the higher ends of the thousand. And we also use an iron catalyst. So we use an iron catalyst. And obviously there's a reason why we use all this. And this is, is the whole balancing act. So these are the balancing act. Because if we would go to an extreme, 
right? we will say, okay, we'll go 200 degrees Celsius and 1,000 atmospheric pressure. This gives us our highest ammonia yield. But we don't do that. We use other things to achieve this balancing act. So first of all, let's talk about what we actually need to do to increase the amount of ammonia overall being produced. So not the percentage yield, but the overall ammonia being produced. We need to have a high reaction rate. A high reaction rate, that's important. And also we need to have a decently high ammonia yield. So percentage yield, percentage ammonia yield and reaction rate are all important when it comes to the production of ammonia overall, right? So both of these play a role. How do we get reaction rate to be increased? Well, the reaction rate is increased by looking at the temperature, right? So the higher our temperature, the higher our reaction rate, the faster they'll be moving. And that means they're going to have enough energy to actually make the reaction happen. So we need to have that reaction rate to make the reaction happen because that means more are going to collide. So more of these particles are actually going to meet and collide with enough energy. And we do that by having high temperatures. So the higher the temperature, overall, the higher the reaction rate. How do we increase the ammonia yield? Again, that would be high pressure and low temperatures. Oh, by the way, also, these high pressure and high temperatures both increase the reaction rates. Right? So on the one hand, to increase reaction rate, we need high pressure and high temperatures. And on the other hand, we need for to increase the ammonia yield, we need high pressure but low temperatures. Now, first of all, this explains why we choose a temperature of about 500 degrees Celsius. So we said we have a medium temperature of 500 degrees Celsius because that achieves one thing that increases, this increases our reaction rate, which we need to increase overall ammonia production. But it also, if we were to choose in a really high, so why wouldn't we take an 800, 900? Because if we take too high, that means the actual percentage of ammonia yield will go down. So by having this medium one, it means we have a high reaction rate, but we still have a decent percentage yield. And so this is the compromise, the, the balance. Now, one question would be, why do we use medium pressure and not high pressure? Because for the high reaction rate and the percentage of ammonia yield, high pressure is both, in both these cases, high pressure is useful. But we use medium pressure, not high pressure. And one of the reasons why is because of the cost. And we'll talk about that when we talk about pressure more specifically. But the cost and the safety. If you have too much pressure, that means this whole thing might blow. You can imagine these sort of things bursting. So to maximize safety, we want to have sort of lower pressure than the extreme high pressure situations. And having lots of pressure would also cost a lot of money because we need to have different types of facilities and different types of um, processes to make that high pressure happen. So we also want to be able to reduce our cost. And that's one of the reasons why we use sort of 200 atmospheric pressure as a opposed to the 1,000 atmospheric pressure, which would be ideal, right? just to minimize safety concerns and to minimize our cost. But so now we've covered you know, the, the balance between the reaction rate and the equilibrium. And what they mean by equilibrium here is, that, remember, this here is an equilibrium. Right? So this here is equilibrium, this reaction in equilibrium, which means if we wanted to go shift to the right-hand side, what we would have to do is increase pressure and decrease temperature. That would make it go as most to right as possible, but we are not, we're not um, increased. So we have to decrease pressure, as uh, our decrease temperature. So we have to put down temperature and put up our pressure. So as low temperature as possible and high pressure as possible, that would make it the equilibrium shift to right. We we're meeting and we we're meeting a balance. We're not having as low temperatures possible. We're having these medium temperatures just because it allows us to have a decent reaction rate, right? So even though it means less equilibrium won't shift as to right as possible, it will only be a slight shift, but overall the temperature is a balance between sort of looking at the equilibrium part of it and also looking at the reaction rate. Right? So this means that there's less of a percentage yield, but overall there's more of a reaction rate. And those two factors combined will give us a higher production of ammonia overall. The last thing I want to mention is the how we can deal with the reaction energy. So the reaction energy was again how much energy is required to make the reaction happen. And we said that the reaction energy is usually overcome by increasing the temperature, right? So usually we have 
this here is the R reaction energy, right? This part here. And we need to have this much energy, usually in the form of temperature, so heat, to overcome it. So once we overcome it, the reaction actually will actually go ahead. So we need to overcome it to, for the reaction to get to go to go ahead. But there's another way we can actually do something about it, and we'll talk about that in the last video, is we can decrease this energy. Right? So if we decrease the reaction energy, so we actually need less temperature for the reaction to go ahead. And that's done by a catalyst. So that's the reason why we use an iron catalyst. It will reduce the reaction energy, which means we can do more with less temperature. We need less temperature to overcome this reaction energy. And the reason why is because this catalyst has allowed us to reduce it. Right? So that's the reason why we use a catalyst. But yeah, I went over that in the last video as well. But these are this is why we have this balance. This is why we have a catalyst. We have a sort of medium reaction rate to make sure the action reaction can go ahead. And we have the percentage yield being compromised slightly to make sure we actually actually have a reaction rate which is decent because otherwise we would have a temperature which would be too low for the reaction to go ahead. So all of this was the whole compromise situation. But overall it's to maximize production and to minimize safety concerns. Hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.